If we understand electron configurations, it's just a natural step to the next one we refer to orbital notation. Now there's a big difference between electron configurations and orbital notation. A lot of students, when I ask them to do an electron configuration, they give me an orbital notation, or if they give me, if I ask for orbital notation, they give me electron configuration. You need to see the difference between the two. Okay, in orbital notation, we will use a line to represent an orbital. Now in electron configuration, we didn't deal with orbitals, only sublevels. Here, I'm going to show uh, that line represents a single orbital. So if I'm dealing with the 1s orbital, I'll write the 1s down below it. If I put an electron in it, I will represent it this way. Now, uh, you recall that the Pauli exclusion principle says that we can only put two electrons in any given orbital. So if I'm going to represent a p sublevel orbital, it will be written this way such as the 2p. Now if I'm going to put electrons into those, there's another rule I haven't discussed much, and that's known as Hund's rule. Hund's rule specifies that electrons that enter orbitals of similar energy values will enter them singularly before they pair up. Which means if I'm putting electrons into the 2p, let's look at nitrogen for just a second, it has an electron configuration, its final destination electron is 2p Three. Well, will those three electrons, two of them go into this one and one in there? Or will they choose to go in singularly first? Based on Hund's rule, they will enter singularly before they pair. Now what that does is it puts, if I had had the paired up like this, I'd have had an unoccupied orbital over here. The atom doesn't do this, however. The atom actually moves that out, spreads them, separates them, so that this electron is located over here for repulsion reasons. Keep in mind, electrons are still negatively charged, and they would not choose, I hate to use that word choose, but they would not be found in similar orbitals when there's a vacancy available. So we tend to spread them out. Following that rule, then, let's see how an actual electron configuration complete would work. If I give the electron configuration for the nitrogen atom, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, the orbital notation, using indicators for each one of the separate orbitals, then I will start to place them using off balance principle. We will uh, fill the lowest possible energy values full. Using the Pauli exclusion principle, we'll only put two electrons in each one of the available orbitals. And ultimately, using Hunt's rule, we will spread them if there's a choice. Now, those uh, will be the dictating rules for filling up those possible orbitals that are available. So, we start with the first electron. Keep in mind how many electrons we have to place all together. So, 1s, there are the two electrons. Now, they're different. We refer to them as having different spins, and the arrows will indicate that. Then we fill the 2s based on the off-bow principle. Now at this point, the 2s is filled, we now have to place them in the 2p's, we will find them separating out like this. And now our orbital notation for the nitrogen atom is complete. The nice thing about this is this shows us how we can actually combine them with other atoms. We see then that if we have three orbitals, each having a single electron available, then the valence shell electrons, those are the highest values of N, I've got three places to connect on to the nitrogen atom. So when I see the chemical formula for something like ammonia, NH3, that's where we're making the connectors available for the hydrogen, is those spots right there. It's one of the best uses for orbital notation. So keep in mind, you've got to understand how to do an electron configuration for this. Then you have to be able to separate them out and predict how many each orbitals we've got within the sublevel, and then we've got to place them accordingly. Let's try uh, a different type of electron configuration then as well. Let's go on to another example. Let's try to do the orbital notation for the atom vanadium, element number 23 on the periodic table. It has 23 electrons. So where are we going to place them? Well, 
Following our standard rules, we know that to do the electron configuration first, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 finishes out the third row, but not the third energy level. We now go to the 4s2, and it's the second electron into the 3d block. So 3d2 is our configuration. So how will we draw that? 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. There are the available sublevels and orbitals for that atom. Following our exclusion principle, we can only put two electrons in each one of them. Based on the off bow principle, we'll put them in the lowest values first and put them move them right on up as we go. Based on Hund's rule, we'll place them singularly before we pair them up. As we continue on across there, we see a filling pattern that's similar to all the others prior to that. Ultimately, we get to the four S's before we put the three D's. And based on the Hund's rule, there again, we will spread them out as far as possible to start with. Now, there's our complete orbital notation then for a vanadium atom that has 23 electrons. We can count them up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 electrons. Uh, I'm sorry, vanadium has a configuration like this. I need to pay better attention to my electron configuration. So we now have the 23 electrons that are available for the vanadium atom.